what is going on everybody my name is Mehul and welcome to your 15th Ionic tutorial in which we'll be starting off with another application for Ionic which would help us to learn some more things about Ionic just like we learned a lot from the last application the newsreader one well if you haven't watched that one I would suggest you to do that one we discussed some good things in angular and ionic as well in that application so what i was thinking about this one is was kind of create a timer sort of application with just countdowns from a time supplied by the user to zero and then when you know just the timer is sort of over then you perform some sort of action maybe just like an alarm application or something like that so yes that is very much doable in ionic and uh, yeah that's pretty much what we'll be talking about in this tutorial and a couple of more tutorials as well so to begin with again i need <coughs> to add my application so i'm gonna say ionic start and let's just say this is timer app and uh, i want the activity to be pretty much blank so i'm just gonna write blank here whoa blank and hit enter so it will just fetch you some resources right there hmm. so just wait for it to complete and it will complete in a second now and uh, you could have just selected tabs here as well then you might have to just get rid of <coughs> the CSS and JavaScript added by Ionic so I just went to blank one and it just says that it is initializing the project so yeah we have got all the files pretty much but let's just wait for the confirmation message alright so here we go and again we have the same sort of layout which we had last time so you can see that it's pretty much installed now if I just go to my timer app www folder we get all of that stuff which we got for our newsreader app similar stuff so I'm just gonna open index right here and yeah I'm gonna say ionic and pretty much first of all just go to my application ionic surf and hit enter okay so now we have got the same sort of application which we had last time so what we are gonna do is we're gonna make use of uh, a timer application so we are gonna create a timer sort of application and I'm just gonna open all of these files which I require pretty much in my workspace for now and I'm gonna hide the sidebar so first of all let's just get stuff accordingly so let's just change this to timer app and then we are gonna change this module to timer application as well and uh, change this to a bar of uh, my app and again my app dot run and right here I'm gonna create my app dot controller our own controller which would be pretty much just let's just say this would be ng controller timer control and uh, here we go now for this application we require a couple of things from angular and the first one would be obviously the scope but the second one would be a timeout now timeout is pretty much just like set timeout in javascript but this is sort of an angular equivalent for example that it would just sort of update your digest cycle because if you just don't use or make use of timeout you'll you know, just make use of scope.apply so that's one of the same thing you just have to let angular know that you know you are just 
messing around with some variables on the page so just pass in timeout and uh, right here we can show off our controller inside this ion content I can say that div ng bind um, let's just say this is my timer and you could actually just make use of that expression sort of thing as well my timer right here that will work equally well let's just make use of that only so I'm gonna say this is div ID of uh, countdown just in case we need to customize it somewhere and uh, I'm gonna define this first of all scope dot what it was my timer right and let's just say this is for now <clears throat> set to 60 seconds as you can see it's updating in real time so I'm gonna create a function which would pretty much first of all let's just create some buttons button um, let's just name it a ng click of start and uh, let's just say pretty much start the timer and after a BR I'm gonna say button ng click stop as well and then stop the timer all right now what I'm gonna do is just simply create these two functions which would start and stop the timer scope dot start is a function right and uh, this would again um, not pretty much accept anything so I'm gonna say that uh, scope dot my timer minus minus and actually since we need to do this thing recursively unless the user clicks on the stop timer button so I guess it would be a better approach to create a function out of it so um, let's just say that I have this function scope dot my custom timer and this is a function so I'm gonna say right here instead of in scope dot start so that we can just <clears throat> keep the track of timer my timer minus minus and I'm gonna again say that uh, alright so we are gonna make use of timeout so we need to store this in a variable as well so this would be your <clears throat> my timer variable and uh, I don't you know get a lot of names in my head to name this function so well this looks sort of odd so I'm gonna get rid of this and pretty much right here I'm gonna just declare this for my timer what it was custom time my timer variable or something like that so right here I'm gonna say my timer variable equals now we're gonna make use of timeout right here so I'm gonna say timeout no not set timeout timeout function and this function actually is the just like it's like equivalent of set timeout here then a function then the number of seconds after which that function would be called and remember that this is set timeout not set interval so this would run only once so that is why we are just calling this function again and again and how do we call that well we call that by simply saying scope dot my custom timer instead of the function writing the function right here and just change it to a thousand seconds now what's happening here let me just get the things around so we have defined the undefined variable for right here and I'm saying that my time variable is timeout of scope dot my custom timer which again runs this function after a thousand seconds now again this would run till infinity unless we stop this somehow so we need a base condition and the base condition would be if scope dot my timer which is the timer we are making use of is zero then what I want to do is pretty much I want to timeout dot cancel and this all comes from angular 
and since we have registered this inside a my timer variable I'm gonna say my timer variable here and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the start function and what we need to do again in the start one we just need to send in my timer variable as timeout scope dot my custom timer and a thousand seconds so what it does is pretty much it just in the scope dot start when this is called then my timer variable gets initialized with a timeout and again this timeout this function right here inside a timeout so for example when we call this scope dot start first of all this timeout runs after a second and then this function again runs the same timeout after a second and returns that reference to the same variable so that we can refer it to it again and again and again I am referring this my timer variable instead of just making use of something like this is because we need to cancel this timer right here and also when you will create the functionality of the stop this button stop the timer then we need to make use of this my timer variable so so far seems good and uh, yeah so let's just try that out if I click on start the timer you can see that it started decrementing by a value of one per second and looks cool so yes this is a basic start for our timer application and yes we can do a lot of things with this like you can just create a circular sort of diagram which just you know just defills itself kind of whenever a value is decremented so that simple kind of you can say you just have to create a div and then set it border radius to 50 percent and a border and just decrease the width of the div or you know we can just do that pretty much with css easily so that's pretty much how this looks like and let's just wait 10 more seconds to see that whether the timer actually stops or not five four three two one and zero all right so it doesn't stop kind of all right so if scope dot my timer is zero then you want to set time all right so yeah i guess i got it we need to return false here and what this would actually do is that what happened actually is that yes the timeout was cancelled but actually after this if block this code ran again so it just created that timeout system again so it, this line doesn't really have any effect because even it said timeout if you have done that in JavaScript the code actually runs even if you clear the timeout so if you have like a set timeout block and then inside that set timeout set timeout block somewhere you clear the timeout then the code below it would still run for one time that's for set timeout so that's pretty much it for this one and let's just quickly see that with a 10 second one so let's just start the timer and uh, eight seven six five four three two one and here we go so the timer just cleared itself out and return false to the function so that this thing doesn't execute anymore so that's all for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be looking at the stop the timer button and uh, pretty much just customizing this a little bit so it really looks like a sort of mobile application instead of just a bunch of html buttons and a counter so yeah guys thank you very much for watching and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching